Hey there, folks. This is Jay Madison with Behind the Diamond with the Watertown Rapids. And we have a real treat for you today. We have the voices of the Watertown Rapids, the Dan Dalen and Connor Lalone. How you doing, gentlemen? Doing great. The Behind the Diamond almost sounds like a... Uh... A misnomer. Connor and I kind of operate slightly above and to the left of the diamond. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. You you are slightly above the diamond. Absolutely. Yes. You can always count on Dan for the smart uh, replies. And Connor, how about you, sir? No, I'm I'm excellent. Like Dan said, I mean. Uh, pretty awesome spot to be in to watch a baseball game. Uh, um, it's a pretty unique view. It's not something that you know, you're used to uh, experiencing. So, um, but it's a lot of fun and, and uh, always a great time. Well, we appreciate having both of you as part of our broadcast team, our entertainment team there at the Watertown Rapids. You know, we had a great season. You know, the, the record for June wasn't so great. We had that big losing streak. But then, man, in July, the team came back, really turned it on, and uh, we just missed the playoffs. If it hadn't been for that uh, one st bad streak there, we would have been in the playoffs. In fact, I think our record was we uh, were the best team in the league the second half of the season. So, uh, that's that's a good note. And I don't know if you gentlemen have heard, uh, we're, I believe, almost at a full roster of players already. So pretty exciting news. That's great to hear. I, I want to apologize. I feel like I could have done more uh, because I started eating a cheeseburger and French fries before the game halfway through the season. It was that <laughs> It was that first game that we won and when we came out of that losing streak, that huge comeback from, you know, come from behind win that we had. And ever since then, it really fared rather well. Had I found that was the gift, I really would have started earlier. So this year, I see undefeated in our future because I'm ready for cheeseburgers and french fries. <laughs> I'll even add a beer if I have to. <laughs> hey, Connor, did, was there any food items that you were not eating the first half of the season? that uh, you then added in the second half. I mean, Dan Dan is fast up to his sins. How about you, sir? No, I don't think uh, I don't think I changed much. Um, the only thing that that I might have started doing was drinking two Red Bulls instead of one. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean nothing specific that I can that I can recall, but uh, hey, whatever it takes to uh, help the team win some more games. I mean, I it was so fun to watch them in, and uh, to come up, you know, a game too short. I think it was maybe even the game short and, and uh, you know, really upsetting, but it was, it was so much fun to watch them play that second half of the season. Yeah. Yeah. So Connor, it, you stick with the, the Red Bull for the speed and agility and I'll stick with the Babe Ruth diet of cheeseburger and beer. <laughs> yeah. Bulk up. <laughs> well, we're just glad to have you both uh, as part of the team. Now, uh, a lot of the fans, like I said, don't get to really meet you. They just hear your voice from on high. And uh, so, Dan, we'll start off with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, you've got this fancy screen behind you, uh, thedandalen.com. What's that all about? So it's actually when I found that I enjoy broadcasting and being behind the microphone. Started with the kids playing hockey, ice hockey. And then when the pandemic hit, I found uh, YouTube and started live streaming games with play by play. And the Dan Dallin or a positive influence is my YouTube channel. And uh, that's where uh, it really took off. Over 1,300 followers, almost 400 plus games on there between uh hockey baseball softball and jay you inviting me out to participate and be a part of the rapids family was truly uh the icing on the cake uh, lots of fun seeing being able to see the people that i'm interacting with is really what gets my heart pumping well you 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 do a great job and we're glad that you joined us and you you brought your professionalism 
uh, to the operation. So it was very appreciated, Dan. How about you, Connor? What's what's your story? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I grew up in Adams and went to South Jeff. So uh, I've always been around the area. Um, and I remember, I mean, they've been through uh, a couple iterations as long as I can remember, but baseball in Watertown's always been, you know, there and, and playing in high school, getting the chance to play at the fairgrounds a couple different times. Um, was always you awesome. Were part of you're you're part of that, you know what we profess Northern New York's field of dreams. Yeah, I mean it, it was always the uh, you know the game when uh, schedules came out at the beginning of the season. It was we always look forward to when are we going to go play Watertown and is it at the fairgrounds? So are we going to go play at, at at the Duffy Dome and and uh, just because it's it's such a nice facility and it's really well taken care of. I know you've talked about that uh, a couple different times with. Um, with Mike and with Coach Hogan. Um, but it's it's just such a cool facility. And so when you, uh, you know, you reached out and asked me if it was something I'd be interested in, it was it was an immediate yes. I mean, it was just uh, such an honor to be involved with the organization and, and the facilities again, um, because it was something that I enjoyed so much growing up as a, as a high school athlete, so. No, that's cool. And we're glad to have you aboard. You, you helped us out tremendously during the year, uh, Connor. Now, Connor, you're, uh, you're also doing something right now. Uh, you're behind the camera with the Watertown Wolves, correct? Tell us about that. Yeah. So uh, actually it's, it's, I won't get into it, but through a, a couple of different connections, ended up meeting up with uh, Steve Weed and uh, got involved with him and he uh, does games at the Fairgrounds Ice Arena uh, for the Wolves. And so I've been running camera for those um, pretty much as soon as our rapid season wrapped up. I got to do play-by-play. Uh, -play. play. was kind of thrown in into the deep end with that, but did play-by-play -play for uh, the Red and Black. So, I mean, in, in the last year or so, I've gotten involved with basically everything there is uh, sporting-wise in Watertown. So, um Again, it's just been a lot of fun, and it's something that obviously I went to school for, um, and it's it's validating to know that, you know, I went to school for the right thing. Uh, so it's enjoyable, and I have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, you went to a Swigo, right? A Swigo, uh, a SUNY a Swigo. What'd you study there? Yeah, I studied. Well, my my actual degree is broadcasting and mass communication. So, um, and I couldn't have asked for a better, again, a better facility, better instructors, that kind of thing. It was just perfect for that. Um, one of the better schools in the whole country for it. And the fact that it was 45 minutes away from, you know, home was awesome. Uh, that's cool. Again, Northern New York's field of dreams. And Dan, where do you see uh, your sideline here going with what you do? So I'm just open to whatever direction it takes me in. I would love to do this professionally. Had I realized this was something that I was going to enjoy so much, you know, X number or XX number of years ago when I was in college, business management may not have been the choice, but, uh, you know, uh, broadcasting is just so intriguing. So I'm just going to keep developing my channel. And if it just, you know, has me sticking with youth sports in central New York forever, that would be just fine and terrific. If it expands to something larger, you know, uh, somebody from the Yankee organization or the Islander organization is listening in and would love to have me participate. I am all in for moving. It is okay with me. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, you both of you have definitely have the talent. We were blessed to have you both on board uh, for the 2022 season uh, where we haven't talked about the 23 season and I won't put you on the spot here, but uh you know, we certainly love to have both of you back or one of you back, however it works out for you. Um, what, what, what do you, what was your big takeaway from the 22 season? Uh, Dan, we'll go with you first. What was, what was the big thing that you really enjoyed? I liked how it, the, the position was open to new challenges. It wasn't just speaking into a microphone. It was incorporating any other talents or crazy ideas that uh, may have come across my plate and I was able to tie in some sound effects and uh, it opened me up to just other opportunities that I could do even on my YouTube channel. I now have video overlays going on in some of my hockey games and it's all thanks to just 
the expanded horizon that I, I had from the rapids. You get immersed in something, you just keep going deeper and deeper, and you just never know what you're going to come across. And for that, I truly am thankful for the people that I've met and just for that extra push, that additional challenge uh, each game to try something new and, and be willing to make a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and deal with the old sea hag. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How about you? And we'll we'll let the fans that are watching figure that one out. Uh, how about you, Connor? What was your highlight from 22? Yeah, I'll take it uh, in a little bit of a different direction. But for me, it was just being able to be a part of it watching the the games themselves um i mean it it felt like everyone together was some sort of collective you know what i mean and it made up a unit that was larger than just any individual person um and that started you know top down but watching the games themselves um i was fortunate had a couple of nights where i was there we had walk off wins um yeah. a couple of different ones one of them was you know, a ground ball that was hit about six feet straight down into the ground that bounced up and over the third baseman's head um, to score a runner from third. And then another one, maybe two or three nights later, it wasn't very long in between, um, we won on a balk. So <laughs> forced to run her home from third. So that was that was cool and it was unique. Um, and, you know, just being part of the team was, was awesome. And uh, I'd love to do it again, yeah. Well, it, it, both of you played a, a critical role because part of part of our whole uh, vision for the Watertown Rapids is to create a baseball atmosphere like d doesn't exist in in northern New York. That's for certain. Um, to create an entertainment atmosphere that's not just a baseball game, but you can come out, watch great baseball, watch these great college students, but also. Uh, have crazy stuff going on around you, whether it's the old sea hag, witch, whatever you want to call her, or our mascot Wazoo, or uh, the Rapids Rockers, our dancing granny group, uh, plus all the other things. And the, the important part is to set that tone. And that's what both of you helped us do in 2022. And we're certainly going to ramp that up for 2023. We're very excited about what's coming. So with this being the last uh, show of 2022, the probably the last big thing for the Watertown Rapids here to end the year, uh, we have to end it on the count of three, gentlemen. Uh, we have to ha end it the way we always uh, start our games. Let's go Rapids. All right. So uh, let's hear it well. So let me see. I'll get the fingers out there. One, two, three. Let's, let's go. go Rapids. Rapids. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a happy new year. Fans, have a happy new year. We'll be back next year, right here with Behind the Diamond with the Watertown Rapids. <laughs>